Ah, well, hello, collectors. Here we are again. Another down the cellar unboxing. Uh, uh, I think this is going to be uh, 109. Is that right, Ob? Yeah, 109. How 109. Wow, well, they just keep uh, accumulating here. That's a that's a lot of uh, a lot of videos. Uh, <laughs> a lot of hours of videos. Yeah. I tell you, wow, well, I that's can't a lot believe of it. Uh, and uh, today is um, today is January the. The 14th, 2024, and um, I'm going to do a, a little shout out here. Uh, uh, there's a very nice man, uh, Daniel Roberts, who lives in Liverpool, England, and he says, uh, Hello, Mr. Whitman, I hope you're well. Me and my dad, Alan, are massive fans of the channel, watching from Liverpool, UK. My dad's birthday's coming up, and I was wondering if you could do a huge favor and wish him happy birthday. It would mean the world. Well, I certainly will, Dan. Um, happy birthday to your dad, Alan. Uh, I hope it's a good one, and uh, thanks for watching my videos. I appreciate it, and uh, thanks for telling me, and I hope you have a really good birthday. And I have a, another birthday that I want to acknowledge. Uh, I have two brothers, and uh, uh, my youngest brother John uh, today is uh, is his birthday, and um, I think he's going to be um, 74. He's six years younger uh, than I am, and uh, I, I hope that he'll have a good time. I, if he's watching the video, I thought I'd I'd show an old picture that maybe would make John feel happy on his birthday. Uh, this picture uh, shows a, um, it was a 33-foot uh, Owen sedan cruiser uh, that my dad had in the 1950s. And um, the two guys here in the, in the front of the boat um, is my brother Ronnie with the red shirt. And uh, I'm in the back there. I was, uh, I guess, about 16 years old there. And... If you look close, you can see I'm even starting to lose my hair then. So <laughs> it still got some, though. Yeah, it still got a little bit. But uh, <laughs> this boat, it was an, an all wood boat, and um, every winter we'd start around March with painting it and trying to get it ready for Memorial Day in May. And then one of the big problems with wood boats is you have to swell uh, the hull, uh, meaning you have to fill the hull the inside of the bilge all with water uh, for about two or three weeks so that the wood swells together uh, otherwise they uh, they leak like a sip, sieve and I remember when uh, the boat was being put in this year uh, we had only had it swelled for about a week or so and uh, they put it in the water and it almost sunk we just got it out in time before it sunk but uh, those were a lot of a lot of great memories. It, uh, the boat the boat was built in um, 1946, and it had uh, two, if I remember correctly, two um, uh, twin. It was a twin screw uh, Ford six-cylinder motors. So well, that thing's a real beast. I mean, oh, it, it, it was a beast. Uh, oh, we went all over the place, and uh, uh, in the last uh, year that we had it, unfortunately, uh, we were going to. to uh, the uh, ocean uh, via uh, the inner uh, waterways where there's bays and bridges and um, uh, my father wasn't the best uh, captain in the world. <laughs> he was, in fact, he was terrible. <laughs> Glad you can't hear me, Dad. But, but he hit a, um, a bridge abutment while we were waiting for the bridge to open uh, and uh, put a hole in the in, in the hull, it was just about a foot over the water line, so fortunately uh, the boat didn't sink. But after that, he got rid of the boat, and then we wound up with an 18-foot fiberglass speedboat. Yeah, it, was I bet. A, yeah. it was quite a change from that Good. that big Owens cruiser. But anyhow, Boy, that's a real, that's a yeah, yacht. it was really Man. fun. Uh, it's great, uh, great stories with that. Uh, well, so happy birthday, Uncle John. Yeah, happy birthday, Uncle John. I hope you remember that boat. I know you do. It's off uh, his Facebook page. I think it was called so. the Ruth C. Yeah, the yeah. Second or something, <laughs> named after my mother. Uh, and then one other thing, too. Uh, 
this uh, uh, model plane, uh, I think it's a P-51, I don't know, I'm not good on that stuff, but um, this was given to me um, back in the 90s uh, by uh, the World War II pilot, his name was Ur Urban Drew, uh, and he was really a, a great guy, and um, he actually um, shot down two ME-161s, you know, the German jet fighter planes? Sure. Two of them. Can you imagine that? But but the way he was able to shoot them down was because they were taking off at the time. If, had they been <laughs> flying around in the air, I don't think this P-51 would have ever caught up with them. Uh, but he was a nice man, and uh, he came to... Um, I guess he's gone now. I'm sure he's gone. But he came to um, to one of the Mac shows and in the 90s and uh, and did a seminar for us uh, uh, I remember he was um, he was a bit of a drunk and uh, <laughs> I had to get him bolstered up with a few drinks before he would get up there and talk and well, he would have fit in great down here <laughs> yeah he, he would fit in great down the cellar and, uh, I remember he's told me one thing that happened to him he was um, he was invited to the Houston show that they used to have in that Astrodome Center down there and uh, the night before the show, uh, apparently he was drinking, and uh, sometimes you get a little caught short on a place to go, and uh, uh, he went over and uh, uh, he was peeing on the wall <laughs> of the, the Astrodome, and the police caught him and arrested him, <laughs> and, and the guys that ran the show had to go down, and a big mess to get it. He finally got out of jail, but uh, that was... Uh, <laughs> That that was uh, Urban Drew, but uh, a fun guy and a lot of great stories. So, so that's where this model airplane comes from. What, so, do, you, what do you got there? Yeah, and I uh, Bob Burns was here yesterday. You guys all know who Bob Burns is, and uh, uh, we've had some pretty good demand. Uh, people want a Bob Burns cutter, so I got him to sign a few here. <laughs> Anybody wants a cutter, it's they're twenty bucks, and that includes the shipping, which the cost to ship it is twenty dollars. So it's it's basically a freebie. So um, give us a call if you'd like one. It's kind of fun to have, you know. It's stupid, I know, but uh, but I'm always with Bob Burns this and Bob Burns that, so uh, it makes it fun. So I guess uh, I guess we ought to get going. Hmm. We've got um, got quite a bit of uh, quite a few boxes. I don't know if there's anything really cool or not, but uh, we'll see. And uh, how would you? Yeah, I I don't know. <laughs> it uh, just uh, we'll see when we open them. Um, but before that, you want a little little pop, Bob? Sure. Yeah, we might as well get started here, and uh, you know, gotta gotta fill up at least. Yeah. That should be good. That glass of yours doesn't look too clean, Ob. You must have forgot to wash it. A lot of, a lot of dirty martinis. Oh, is that what yeah. it is? Well, like I always say, the, the alcohol will kill the germs. <laughs> It'll be all right. Get you started here. Get myself started. All right, that's good. So, what kind of what, what happened to the, that pilot who got caught? <laughs> was it a fine or what? It, what happened to him? Uh, I never heard. Uh, I'm sure there was a fine, and it probably cost him a couple hundred bucks to get him out of jail. And uh, a probably, World War II vet, they locked him up. I can't believe yeah, it. Yeah, World War II hero pilot. Two Me 161s. I think that's what they're called, aren't they? Me 161s, the jet planes. I don't know. I don't think they're jet planes, Dad. But uh, it's. Uh, uh, that's a, I don't think there was ever any other American pilots that had more than uh, one of those if they had any of them. No, he just strafed them. <laughs> you know, it wasn't like a dog Yeah, flight. well, they were. No, they were in the process of taking off, though. They weren't sitting on the ground. So, uh, but as I say, had they had they made it up, he never would have had a chance because uh, uh, they were certainly a lot faster than our little single propeller jobs. <coughs> so, here we go. Here's to you guys. 109, is that it, Ob? 109, yep. Mm. Mm. 
Oh yeah, that's a good start. So I'm chit-chatting here and wasting a lot of time and I got all these boxes so I ought to get started here. Oh. Leaking. Mm. Now let's see the... I'll open this first one because it looks pretty easy. Uh, this is coming from my friend down in Sarasota, Mr. Jack Wells. And uh, he sent me something in the last uh, unboxing too. Uh, it was, oh, it was that um, kid's helmet, remember? Oh, that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And he comes across stuff down there in Florida and all. And let's see what he's what he got here. I hope it's something interesting. We shall see. Nice, uh, Looks like a period case. Nice period case here. Let's see what we could have here, guys. Up oh, papers. And wow, <laughs> wow! Look at the condition of that. That's Ritter von Epp. Hmm. Um, for service. Uh, oh, with the co colonial. Yeah, he was in charge of the uh, German colonial forces back in World War One and remained. Uh, huh. Uh, in that in that group, but boy, that's a beautiful thing, oh, isn't it? Hold on one second. I just want to get the maker on the on the lid. I hate to even lift it out of there. It uh, looks like it's never been touched. Go ahead. I think it'll be okay. Just see if there's anything on the back of it. Try not to. Never seen that one before. That's uh... no, I've never seen it before either. No, nothing on the back. It's a good looking uh, piece. Yeah, boy, uh, for you guys that like condition, wow, colonial stuff. doesn't get any better, and uh, then there's some paperwork with it. Uh, yeah, here's something from the Reich Colonial Bund hmm. with it, and uh, a newspaper article in German. And I've never even heard of the Reich Colonial Bund before. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, well, remember the, the Schutz Truppen uh, were big time when they had the colonies in sure. Africa and China. Uh, so that was, uh, uh, so they, uh, I guess, honorarily uh, kept it up uh, uh, during the 30s, even though they lost their colonies after the war. Uh, but Ritter von Epp was in charge of that, and I believe he was also a, an SA general. Pretty sure. But, what uh, would you think the, it was issued for? Um, I think just as as a gesture to him, probably he, maybe uh, this letter probably may say something about it. Maybe it no, was a I, new I, appointment. I or, don't think it's to him. He's to, he's the one issuing it, isn't he? I, I don't know. You yeah. might be right. I don't know. Yeah, that's true. It's not necessarily to him. He's yeah. maybe something he gave out to some of the right. old uh, colonial troops. Yeah, you're right, Ob. I'm stupid sometimes. I don't think. But anyhow, okay. So that's. Uh, but still, that whole, all that colonial stuff—that's its own niche too. That you could just oh, collect yeah. that. You oh, know? absolutely. It's amazing. Absolutely. So many aspects. But this is in uh, wonderful condition, with the original case and so forth. So. Gee, it doesn't get much better than that. Well, thanks, Jack. Uh, that's uh, that's really a nice thing. Uh, uh, I, I like that a lot. You guys like that? I mean, boy, when you see something in that kind of condition and all, it's a uh, it's pretty rare, uh, pretty rare thing. So that's that's number one. I'll have a drink after that one. Mm. Ah. Let's see what the, is in this box. Looks like it's coming from overseas. Yeah, this is coming from uh, Australia. Oh boy. Yeah, we're, <laughs> uh, we're starting to see uh, stuff every week coming from uh, Australia. And uh, um, unfortunately, that, that law was passed, uh, which I told you last week, I think. And, uh, uh, and there's... Uh, it's a law against collecting or selling uh, Third Reich things, 
and uh, they'll be happy to give you a year in jail if they catch you. No, they uh, along uh, with a big fine. Not and, that I recommend ever doing it, but if you do a Nazi salute, you'll get a year in jail. Yeah, that's right. We you read imagine that. that? It's like you give somebody the finger yeah, and you kidding. get a year in jail. You're out there kidding and do that, and then the next thing you know, you're in jail for a year. Boy. Well, I don't know where uh, where the hobby's going, but um, but it's uh, uh, the poor Australians are in a lot of trouble there, and uh, thus the reason, I guess, that we're getting a lot of a lot of packages from there. So, well, let's see what we got here. I think I'm going to take Urban Drew down or move him up a little bit here so he's out of the way. Oh, boy, well, this is certainly a heavy thing. Let's see what we got here. Um, I guess I'll try it this way first and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, can you imagine if you you have a substantial collection and you you live in Australia and uh, not allowed to sell it, not allowed to display it. Uh, it and just, it could have been the stuff your grandfather brought back from the war. Absolutely. Uh, it's just uh, so wrong and uh, and Australia is a um, is a free country. I mean, it's uh, <laughs> the not, trouble is uh, no, it's not. <laughs> no, it's apparently not. But, uh, the problem is, you know, you, they have these uh, these hate groups that do things, and uh, uh, and then they'll find uh, they'll 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 put a hate group guy in jail, and then find out that he had a Nazi flag or something in his bedroom, and then they say, oh, oh, this is what it is, and the next thing you know, anybody that has any uh, Third Reich stuff is in the same category, and uh, it's just so unfair because it's not true. Yeah, they're basically putting the, the, new, the new white supremacist Nazi flags in the same category as uh, a souvenir from Third Reich Germany. Yeah. And it's just not right. Yeah. You know? and, uh, yeah. And, and those flags aren't even real. <laughs> no, they're, 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 no, they're not even real. So it's just... Um, it's the symbolism is what they're going after, regardless of when it was made. Well, it's, it's really a shame, and uh, uh, I don't know where the world's going to these days, but let's see what we got here. Ooh, wow. Boy, that's a nice pull top. Oh, yeah, that is. DAF. Wow. DAF, and uh, wow, that is nice. It's heavy, solid nickel, and uh, yeah, it's got an RCM mark there on the the stem. It's in great shape. Yeah. Let's see if I can get that. Yeah, wow, that's a, that's a very nice thing which I guess is against the Australian law, right, Ob? I guess. I guess, yeah. yeah I'd say yes. Yeah. Um, piece of history like that. Or, piece of history. Yeah. yeah. Well. Oh, well. Their loss or our gain. <laughs> yeah, I hate to say it that yeah. way, but it's um, it's just just nothing uh, nothing funny about it. Nah, it's not funny. It's not funny. It's not right, really. It's just, no. Oh, here we have another one. Hmm. This one in brass. This one's in brass. It's probably earlier. And yeah, much more ornate. Uh, it's nice with the lines and sure. in the, the swaths. And uh, I don't see any uh, RCM on this one though. Yeah, but which would make it uh, probably earlier. Earlier, yeah. Yeah. And it's a lot lighter. Yeah. Yeah, it is much lighter than the other one. So that's a nice thing too. What do you think the uh, fir the first one was made out of? Uh, solid nickel. Solid nickel. Oh yeah. yeah. It's really, really heavy. Okay. Well, that's. Uh, yeah, pull tops are great. Haven't seen any in a while. Yeah, uh, and they're very collectible too. I mean, they they really are great uh, for display. Some guys will uh, get a 
piece of wood or uh, whatever metal and put a, a tab on it so you can stand it up on there to yeah. display it, you know, that kind of thing. So uh, I remember a collector acquired a whole collection of them one time at a show and put them all on the table and boy, they just... Whoosh, remember that? They yeah. were all gone. Yeah, that guy had, a, he must have had a hundred of them. Old it's Spence, the yeah. With you. Yeah, Spencer. Yeah. Spencer Victory. I haven't seen Spencer in a while. Yeah, he's been around. He's still around, isn't mm -hmm. he? Yeah, he's a good man. Yeah, no, I know he's a good man, yeah. Alright, let's see what's in the next box. Well, this one's coming from Australia too, guys. Yeah. yeah. Very, very sad. Very, very sad. And it affects everybody who collects and who deals, because sure. it's 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 the market's dead. That's it. You can't send anything. You saw with the great coat, and it just goes yeah, on and on. Yeah, that was the on. message to yeah, me. Yeah. That was the message from the Australian Customs. Here you are, Whitman. Here's your coat cut off, all cut up. That's what we think of your stuff and you. Gee, guys, am I really like that? I <laughs> I didn't. Uh, I thought I was a pretty nice guy, but uh, uh, I don't know of anybody that I don't like. So I don't know. Let's see what we got here. Uh, just a number of, number of bags. Well, not a number two bag. Bags are good. Yeah. See what's in the bags, guys. Yeah, let's fly this baby back to the bay here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> your water. Oh, look at that. You imagine that? Yeah. That was one really of the closest you'll get. Well, let's see what this is. Wow. Wow. Boy, this is a, a podium battery. Yeah, with a silver field. With that's, a silver field. That is very odd. Huh. Looks good though. It looks really, really nice. It's big too. Wow, look at the the hanging method. Yeah. There's a stamp and there's on it. A, uh, a maker mark on it. Or somebody's name. It comes from uh, Indianapolis, Indiana, so somebody, probably the vet, stamped his name on uh, there. Huh. I would assume that, but uh, just look at the look at this thing. Boy, now that's a podium banner, guys. Look at that thing. Isn't that elaborate? Does he have anything on it? Does he uh, send anything? Because I've never seen the silver field before. No, but I haven't either. Maybe, uh, and if it has any United States date on it, or an address with a stamp like that, it could be bunned. No, I don't think so. I mean, it's possible, I guess, but... Um, it wouldn't be a, uh, a, a date that goes back to the, a bund. Um, is it dated? Yeah, it looks like he wrote his name on the back of it here too. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a vets that's a vets thing. <laughs> I just never seen a guy with his personal yeah. stamp before put it and put it on. Well, there's a zip code on it, and we didn't get zip codes till the 1960s, so oh, this yeah. was stamped after that time, anyhow. Right, Which doesn't to... mean anything either. I mean, the vet could have because this is this is the same name as that. And that, that is a really old uh, writing there that's almost gone. I'll have to take a look at it. Yeah. I've just never seen that silver field before, ever. It's it doesn't mean it's not right. I know, it's, I know. it's really just, well done. Let me just zoom in on the uh, stitching on it. Yeah. Hmm. Very interesting. That's quite a, quite a podium banner. Wow. There's no note from the uh, consigner? Not yet. That's a cool piece. 
That's cool. Let's see what the other piece is here. Oh, uh, yeah, this is one of those uh, NSDAP uh, town. Yeah, I think this man was a DAF collector. That's what it looks like. Yeah, here we go. Here's a there's a DAF uh, town banner. Boy, that's nice too. Double sided, yeah. Can I see the town? Yeah. <coughs> yeah, it's from uh, Southern Rayette. I don't know that place. All the rings there, Pop? There's a what? All the rings? Uh, it looks like they are. They're not RZM, or yeah, they're yeah. RZM marked inside too. Are they all there? <coughs> yeah. yeah. It looks like it, yeah. Yeah, they're all there. This is in nice condition, this banner. Sure. Let me see if I can get one RZM shot here. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, the collectors like to see that. Yeah, sometimes they have them, sometimes they don't. Depends on when they were made. Right. This one's from 37. It looks to, to be a perfect piece, except there's a, a little hole there to the right of the uh, the town box. Yeah. But that's the only fault I see. Well, that's in a nice looking. No, that's, a, that's a really nice uh, banner. I think those are undervalued. To tell you the truth. Yeah, this is a, <laughs> this is a rare thing. Yeah. And then DAF besides. Yeah, that's uh, that's quite a uh, quite a nice uh, nice item <clears throat> coming from Australia. Yeah. Oh boy, shame. Really a shame. Well, the good part is that uh, other collectors will get to enjoy that piece now. So, all right, that. Uh, that's that. Uh, let's see what this is. Uh, uh, coming from Australia also. <laughs> I like what he put on here for the customs. Old walking stick. <laughs> let's see what that is. Let's see what this old walking stick looks like. Come on, Bob. Here we go. Man, those were a couple of really fine banners. Wow. And bolt packs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it is an old walking stick. I think it's the staff for the uh, for the uh, DAF banner. You know, you might be right. You know, I think you're right, Ob. Try not to score it. No, I'm not gonna. Not gonna just gonna see if I can loosen it up a little bit. Like. Oh, so close. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think you're right, Ob. And it looks like that's the whole rig. The uh, pole top goes on top of there. The uh, you know what? It's, yeah. a, it's the whole rig. Yep. Probably the brass. The brass, the brass pole one top goes, goes yeah. on there. See if it fits. Yeah. Yep. That's what it is. Well, oh, you don't I, see I, that too often. I think you're absolutely right, Ob. And, you know, realistically, the other one could go on there, too, if it was used later and they reissued them. Yep. But this one's going to match. You watch. Let's just see. Oh. <laughs> How did you know that, Al? I don't know. You look like the guy from Readers of the Lost Ark when they put the stamp on the, yeah. and the jewel on top. So, see, collectors, we got the whole rigging here. Yeah, that's a that complete fantastic? set. Yep. Then at the bottom, it's got a little... Brass, uh, and there shouldn't be any RZM marks on it whatsoever. No, I don't see anything. I'm just interested to know if the other one would go on there too. But I doubt it. it was I doubt not going to fit like that, but just give it a shot. Uh, you want me to? Okay, I'll, I'll do it. But you'd think if they gave it, it wouldn't have the same fittings for that one, but it might fit. 
Well, this other one weighs three times with. Yeah. No, that's bigger. I can see it's much bigger. Okay. I yeah, mean, you're right. Over it. Yeah, you're right. Right, but it'll wobble. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. You don't see that too often. Never. No, I've. Uh, uh, I don't ever remember having anything like this. So that's uh, that's a neat old walking stick. Am I getting you up? <laughs> <laughs> Almost. Yeah, that's a neat walking stick. Wow, how about that, collectors, huh? Uh, you know, we have a lot of different things here, but uh, how many of you have ever seen that before? Uh, that's cool. I think it is, too. I think it's really cool. Now, mm. how would the rings and all that go over top of that, and then how do they secure them? Uh... I don't know, we'll have to study it, but uh, uh, I think it worked out somehow. Well, we'll see. All right, let's see what we got here next. Uh, this is not coming from Australia, guys. Uh, <laughs> this, this is, is coming um, from Austria. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is from uh, Cottonwood Heights, Utah. Doesn't that sound like a nice place, guys? Cottonwood Heights. Yes, sir. Mm. Nice place. I think I got beat up there one time. <laughs> well, I think I need another drink after that. Uh, yeah, that sounds like a good walking idea. Step on that. You don't associate Utah with cotton, though. That's the that's the weird thing. Well, that is true, yeah. I don't think there's too Must many... Must be somebody's cotton. last name. Yeah, not too many cotton farms in Utah. Not that I remember. I was at the Great Salt Lake once, I remember that. Floating around in there and all that salt water. Yeah. Well, as we moving along here, guys. Well, how about those things? Oh, they, they were neat, you know. Just stuff we don't uh, yeah we don't see. That podium banner, I think, is a killer too. Yeah, there's a lot of good collectors in Australia, don't you? Yeah, it's interesting to see different stuff, you know. It's coming from the other side of the world. Well, let's see what we got here from Cottonwood Heights, Utah. Hope this is much fun. I was hoping I broke the code here, but I guess I didn't. Maybe it is too. Get some popcorn. Now well, let's see. Hi there. Here's inventory. Yeah, all right. Let's see what we got. Well, it looks like we might have some daggers, guys. Yeah. Looks like uh, all kinds of things here. Well, we'll look at the the edge weapons first, and the Bob Burns cutter disappeared. How could that be? Because I just opened up the. <laughs> oh, here it is. Yeah, that's why. That damn gravity all the time. Boy, hard to keep track of these. Uh, I had to get a Bob Burns cutter with a string on it and a little clip to my shirt. Some of them we never seem to find again uh, until we're cutting up the box and there's that Bob Burns down the bottom of it. 
Well, this is a pleasant looking uh, bayonet. Look at that, it's mint, beautiful paint, beautiful hilt. Got the felt in the slot. Yeah, that's a real, uh, a real beauty there. Oh, how about that? And uh, it's a holler uh, with a standard remembrance. That's pretty nice. Mm-hmm. You get that, Ub? Yeah. Yeah. It's good shape. And it's plain on up. Oh, no, it's not plain on the back. There's a little something oh, here. Maybe I, I'm reading it upside down. I can't see what it says, but uh, it's somebody's name, I believe, and uh, their battalion, Panzer. Let me see. I think. Uh, Gebruder Pioneer. Pioneer. Battalion. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Uh, P.I. Yeah. Yeah, it must be Pioneer, and that's his name. So. Theoretically, uh, this could be uh, researched, and uh, that's a very, very nice uh, great shape. bayonet. Really great Beautiful shape. condition. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I kind of like that. You like that one, Ob? That's mm -hmm. pretty different. Yeah, that's a and it's nice to see mint. something from Pioneer, too. You don't see that much. Oh, wow. Look at the condition of this K98. Man, oh, man. Is that a wood grip on there too? Wood yeah. grip. Yeah, 8722. Shall we see if it matches? Mm. 1871. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but still um, a very nice. Uh, does, that's the, a, um, does the wood handle indicate like an earlier make or is it a later make? Or well, this S155 is a code for the maker. I'll have to look that up. I don't know who it is offhand. And the, and the scabbard... Uh, the scabbard has a 38. Uh, yeah, but they're, to, they're totally two different oh, elite uh, Elite Diamond. Yeah, I've heard of them before. So the scabbard was made in 38. I don't know whether the bayonet was, but... Uh, but the condition is extraordinary. Boy, it's tough getting a picture with you, Ralph. <laughs> oh, you didn't get it? Yeah, you're flipping and flopping all over the place. Oh, sorry about that. What did you want to see? I want to see it all. Okay. All right, let me see the back of the scabbard again. All right. Yeah, look at that. Elite, it says Elite on there. Huh? Yeah, Elite Diamond, that was a huh. maker. I've never seen that. Yeah, I've I have. Never seen pretty rarely, yeah. very rarely seen the 38, so... And 38, that would explain why it has the wood grip plates if they're, you know, they don't match, but assuming they're why near. Why do you say that? Um, the later pieces made during the war mostly have the uh, Bakelite grips. Okay. Not all the time, but mostly. Okay. At least that's what I've seen. Uh, I'm no expert on K98 bayonets, but uh, I've seen them that way. All right. Uh, uh, those are certainly nice, and let's see what else is in this box. Aha! Uh -huh. Well, look at that, guys. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, rural Police Overseas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very nice. Um, NCO, I guess. But, uh, boy, that's, that's really nice. No, uh, no mothing, guys, and the nice, um, the nice uh, orange piping for rural. Yeah, I think it's uh, brand new. Oh boy, it's nicely marked here too. Fifty-five and a half. Yeah. Yeah, you usually don't see a half on these kind of things, but uh, but that's a uh, that's a very nice uh, very nice um, overseas cap or side cap, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's good. Does that, does that make sense in the... What? With 55 and a half, wouldn't that be an American measurement? Did you ever hear of a 55 inch head? No, it's not an American. <laughs> okay. 
Oh, we've got a couple of cuff titles here. Let's see how these look. Yeah. Africa. Africa, they both look good. Yeah, they're nice. They're nice. And let's see what else is in here. An assortment of goodies. Well, this is stuff we can always use. Yeah. Oh, boy. Look at there, guys. There's an SS uh, short hanger. RZM type with a belt loop. Uh, and here's an early uh, SA. Got a couple of um, a couple of porta peas too. Let's see what kind of shape they're in. Let's see here. Let's see what we got. Well, here's an army one. Uh, shows quite a bit of wear yeah. and uh, it's the kind you don't see too often see how thin the cord is that same thin cord was what they used on the small government official diplo uh, knots and you don't see it much on army knots and I'll guarantee you the company that made this also made the government official knots because of the small cord that just I think I don't know that of course but and the other one is a, another army knot that shows some uh, some use, but still, you know, if you have a dagger, it uh, it's it's not mint. Uh, and once these are tied on, they don't look too bad either. Sometimes the frame goes right where the the uh, knot comes out and all. So uh, so they're okay. And uh, one more thing, one of these uh, uh, SS. NCO sword things. We see a lot of these. Uh, they're all in choice condition. Uh, these were uh, left over at the end of the war and uh, a couple of uh, large boxes of them were uh, found by Johannes Flock back in the 70s and uh, so but they're good. So there you go. Uh, uh, that's kind of some interesting things there. Nice condition things. Yeah, that'll work for me. I like them. I like the police cap. Yeah, that police cap's nice. Yeah, that's a that's a cool thing. So, thank you from Cottonwood Heights, Utah. Nice box of items there. And I think I have a I think I have another box from the from the same man, so we may as well uh, open that up because we're looking good so far. Yep, Cottonwood Heights, Utah. Gotta be the same guy. Yeah, no, it's him, same man. And we'll see what he's got for us here in this box. Hi Tom, Deb, Rob, and crew. All right, let's see what we got in here. Isn't that Boom Boom Washington used to say that on Welcome Back Hotter? Yeah. Hi there. <laughs> yeah. Looks like some daggers, guys. Yeah. I don't mind a popcorn when it's like this, you know, but you can usually work around it. That was... I 
hear Jack barking up there. Yeah. I, you guys are wondering what that dog barking is. It's our puppy Jack, I guess. Oh, here we go. Yeah, well, this is nice. Yeah, that's a that's a nice um, second model look there. Nice, uh, nice knot too. Good airplane gray. Beautiful um, orange colored grip. Um, it's got um, kind of like um, generic. Uh, mounts on it so we don't know who made it oh gorgeous blade wow pretty blade huh Rob? yeah yeah oh it's a Robert class <laughs> there we are yeah that explains the generic mounts too because um, class didn't make their stuff Yeah, so that's a, that's certainly a nice a nice dagger. You got her up. Yep. Not bad at all. Let's see what we got next here. Looks like there could be another Luftwaffe. Huh? Yeah, this one's got a, um, a silvered scabbard with a nice orange grip. Yeah, in good condition. Uh, let's see who made this one. I don't know offhand. Oh, another beautiful blade. Yeah, I see the grain in there and all, and. Uh, Let's see who produced this. Oh, it's a Horster. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's a nice dagger, too. Yeah, well, this man has good taste. Yeah, those are nice. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with either one of them. And let's see what else we got here. I like the way he wraps things. See guys where you can use the bubble paper, but just a single piece of tape holds it fine. You don't need to, you know, uh, <laughs> saran wrap it. And, uh, <laughs> wow. Oh man, I know what this is. Okay guys. Some of you guys may know what that is, uh, but if you don't, uh, you've probably all heard of the uh, so-called Luftwaffe funeral dagger with the black grip. Uh, this is how it originally was. The grips were painted white and the grip is black underneath. And uh, the funeral daggers that we see today, uh, the paint's been removed and you have the black grip. Uh, this is very, very rare to see one yeah. where it's uh, still intact and proves beyond a doubt uh, that um, that Luftwaffe personnel did not buy a dagger just to go to a <laughs> funeral. <laughs> and, uh, the other side. and this um, uh, yeah. uh, this should be a class dagger. If it's not a class dagger, I'm all wet, but... Uh, it's got to be a class dagger, but let's see. How about that? Boy, that's a great piece. Usually uh, you see it the other way. It's black, but there's white flakes. Yeah, around. right, it's, right. This one's just starting. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah, that's it's a class. class. Pretty yeah. good, Pop. Yeah. So this is a great thing to see, collectors. This proves that the funeral daggers had white grips. Uh, that doesn't mean that a funeral dagger is not a bona fide variation because it is 
because only these class daggers had these black grips. Now, uh, what's underneath the black uh, paint? Is it a, it's a wood grip? No, it's all solid also celluloid. celluloid right? It's black celluloid. So the uh, so the cell it's just black celluloid. Okay. The grip is black celluloid, and uh, like I was gonna say, maybe uh, the black was on there for as a primer. That did, did no. It take? Nope, no, 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 no. It's black okay. celluloid, and uh, the same thing with the so-called first model railway daggers. Uh, they're all made by class. They have black grips, but they were painted white also, and we can usually see traces of the white paint somewhere. When did they there. start calling them funeral daggers? Uh, that is probably something that was uh, uh, invented in the in the <laughs> 70s when we first noticed the dagger, because uh, um, dealers know that if you if you can't identify something, uh, nobody wants to buy it because they <laughs> want to know what it is, you know. So they, they make these names up, and then over the years, they, they of course, they just stick. And as I've said before, there's no such thing as a first model railway dagger either. Uh, it never existed. <laughs> but it is a true variation because of the black grip, and it's got to be a class, and et cetera, et cetera. So See, that's a that's a very good thing. Just uh, hold it up one more time for me. Yeah, yeah. that's really a. a you ever great... seen one in that condition? No. Yeah. I've seen them with just a little, a little bit, bit of white, white paint yeah. on them. This one is the best one I've ever seen. What a great example. Yeah. Uh, the, the, I was going to turn the pommel off, but the pommel's real tight, so I won't do yeah, that. All the paint why, will fall off. Why disrupt it? <laughs> yeah. Well, there. That's. Uh, uh, that's a worthwhile thing, guys. Uh, it looks like a rather bulbous grip, too, compared to the other ones. I mean, if you look at all three of them are different in size. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah they are. Um, but that, uh, uh, that is, uh, uh, that just seeing this, collectors, is worth watching the whole uh, stupid unboxing here because uh, <laughs> you will not see that again and I hope you'll remember that too. Well, it would be cool if you had like five or six different stages and put them all together. Oh, you know? probably yeah. if you could yeah. get, but you just never see, see them like them. that. Yeah. Uh, uh, my friend Jason Burmeister uh, I believe has one with with um, quite a bit of pain on it but not this much so uh, that is a uh, that is a super super thing there I don't want to get it disturbed with the back, so. So even if you had a solid white grip on a Klaus LD2, you're, it's, you're, it's probably has black underneath it. Probably, yeah. yeah. Would you no, well, no, not necessarily. I mean, it's got to have the right look and all. You could things. take it and look inside the, the uh, inside the grip, right? Uh, I don't think you'll see a white grip really on a on a Klaus dagger anyhow. They're usually orange or whatever. Um, uh, that is identifiable immediately by what it is, and it, what a great piece. And only class? Mm -hmm. Only class. That's a, and that's a valuable thing too. For guys that are really interested in these kind of things, that is a, uh, uh, I, I would venture to say that may be the best one there is, <laughs> and it proves beyond a doubt. Call that an advanced collector's piece. Yeah, it is. It's for somebody that really understands things. In fact, it might go upstairs, I'm not sure. But oh, boy. I, I hope not. But the, I was going to say, Jason will probably be calling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it could be. Well, let's see what else we got here, guys. Moving along. Uh, this box is uh, from Lebanon, Indiana. Uh, this man... Uh, Sent some stuff in last week too. Uh, uh, he has a uh, a gun shop there, Civil War stuff and all that. And uh, and over the years, he uh, he gets German things, and uh, uh, he's the first one to admit that he really doesn't know what they are. Uh, so he's sending some of this stuff to me, trying to loosen his load a little bit. Let's see what we got here. Hmm. Bob Burns didn't get us. There we go. Well, how about that Luftwaffe, huh, Bob? 
boy. And how about that pole top and the walking stick? Walking stick, yeah. Well, let's see what we got here. Well, on the top it looks like we got some some cloth items. I lost the Bob Burns again. Here it is. Let's see what the cloth items are. I think everybody likes to look at this kind of stuff. It's always interesting, and an awful lot of people collect armbands too. So we got it. Well, here's just a. Just a small pennant, printed type, uh, and here we have a uh, an HJ armband that uh, certainly was worn a little bit, and it's the kind with the separate uh, separate swaz and uh, separate diamond. Um, I doubt if there's a tag in this one. Nope. Yeah. Uh, but you can see it was worn some, uh, and then we got a. Just a Waffen SS like that. Uh, really faded. That's um, it's a printed thing. It looks fairly worn too. Yeah. Um, and here's one in uh, the type you see more often. This may have been this color at one time. Yeah, and, uh, but that one's printed. The other one's stitched. Yeah. yeah. But they look okay. They'll work. Thank you, sir. Okay, Ob. Uh, want another pop? Sure. Sure. I never heard you say no yet. <laughs> never heard that. All right. A little there. A little in there. Tomorrow morning I'll be like, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> Too late then. That's getting the dog's hair that bit you. All right. Well, we still got more in this box. We just had those armbands and we'll see what else is in here. There's Uncle John. Yep. My brother Johnny. Happy birthday John. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Don't know what these are. Um, I don't have a clue what they are. I think I do. It's where you put your uh, staff into when you're carrying a flag. What do they call it? They open oh, up and maybe I'm wrong. Oh, they're instruments. Is that an instrument? It's a flute. It's a flute. <laughs> How about that? Wow. Can you play us a song, Pop? Yeah. No, I'm not even going to try. I don't try. think it's a flute. I think it's a recorder. I'm not sure. Does the other piece go with it? Well, let's see what these tags say. Huh? It says German Fife. Huh. That's exactly what it is. There is a mark here. There's a manufacturer. Yeah, it's mark. marked. And let's see what the other one is. And Yeah. Same thing. Yeah, how about that? This See, one. Where's Uncle John when you need him? Look at that. There's an RZM on that up there. Yeah, it's probably that. Uh, it's so it must have been made for a political band if it has the RZM on it. Why don't you look it up? See who made it. Well, it wouldn't. That's not going to tell us anything. I mean, it'll tell us who made it, but. Uh, yeah, well, let's find out. Oh, that'll take a long time. I don't want to do that. <laughs> It'll take a long time. It's not an. It's not a dagger marking. It's a. Yeah, I know. A musical instrument. All the marking. musical had their own uh, marks yeah. too. Yeah, they probably did. Yeah. So there you go, guys. In the original case and everything. The case is marked at all. Um. There's a site here. No, I don't see any. Well, I gotta tell you, I never seen anything like that before. Nope. And if you collect uh, musical instruments, musical instruments and, and music-related items, uh, there are guys that do. Yeah. 
Uh, those are uh, those are a couple of interesting things. Yeah. All right. Let's see what else is here. What are they, I thought they were, what do they call that? The bandolier. And bandolier. That's, yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. That's what it looked like at first. Let's see what this is. Uh, You can't play a little horse vessel on that? No, not today. <laughs> a couple more drinks I'll try. <laughs> Where's Uncle Johnny when you need him? He could probably play that yeah. thing. Oh, Johnny could. He can play the flute. Johnny's a real musical prodigy. Well, this is, uh, this is the cheapest <laughs> French horn I've ever seen. It's made out of aluminum. It's as light as a feather. I've never seen an aluminum French horn, but uh, there you go. Uh, and they say not a, no, it's a hunting signal horn. Okay, it's not a French horn. <laughs> you hear something? So that's an interesting thing. So it's a hunting horn and it's very lightweight, so you could carry it easily. Sure, it makes sense. Low down. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, any markings pop? I don't see enough. Yeah, you're right yeah, here. See? Yeah. 1942, and it's got a maker name on it. Looks like C.J. Schmidt. If I can get it. But the owner's absolutely right. It is a hunting horn, and uh, that's why it's so lightweight. Let's see if this comes out, because sometimes this is marked, too. But, no, I don't no, want to force it. That's a good it. shape there. Yeah. yeah, so that's... That's cool. That's cool, yeah. I've never seen it before. A lot of odd stuff here. And anything else in this one? Yeah, there's one more thing here. Ah, it looks like we're into instruments this trip. It all comes through here eventually, you know? <laughs> Sooner or later, Rob. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, this is uh, another horn. Wow, this is a uh, this is nice. Um, I think it's uh, made by that same company. It's dated 1938. Um, let's see if he a little no, better. It's a military bugle. A little better quality in 38 than in 44. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, which is understandable. Let me see the make. No, um, no it's not the same. Anything. It's not the same maker. No. I thought you said Schmidt or something like that. No. Oh yeah, yeah, maybe it is. No, this is not Schmidt. Well, the other one was maybe not Schmidt either. We just thought it wasn't right. first look. Yeah, well, that's uh, is what it is. So, so that's it for that box. Never seen that before. Musical instruments? Right. Yeah, a box full of uh, instruments. How about that, guys? And a few armbands on top just to soften it up. Cool, cool stuff. Oh, there's guys out here that probably love this kind of stuff. When you first brought those fifes out, or uh, I thought they were uh, pull sticks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Alright, that's, that's that. See if we got any more boxes up. Yeah, got some more. Let's see what this is. This is coming from Folsom, California. Doesn't look like the first time this box was used either. Well, let's see if we can get her open. But the box made the trip. That's all that counts. Let's see. Let's see what this is. Oh, good. Uh, we got another another rag here. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> uh, Looks brand new. <laughs> Oh yeah, right. Yeah. It's 
brand new. It's new. It's new to you. <laughs> new to me, well, makes for good padding, I guess. Sure. <laughs> They get a lot of rags and socks in this business, guys. Uh, let's see what we got here. Wow. Very nice, um, very nice bayonet. Long army. Good, good condition. It's, it's got like a kind of a K98 type frog on it. Yeah, I think you're right and about that. Dated yeah. 1940, the frog is. Where's that? Up here. Yeah, so let's see if it's uh, if it's just a bayonet or if it's more. Well, it's just a bayonet. But... Well, it's a um, it's a double double proofed um, icorn with a uh, supplier on one side, mm -hmm. and then the. Uh, then the icorn mark on the other side, and uh, this is quite interesting. Uh, uh, the owner has his monogram hmm. up here. That's something you don't see on bayonet hilts. No. I don't know whether it's engraved in there or etched. I think it's engraved. It feels like it's engraved. Yeah. yeah, that would be a pretty hard job doing yeah. into that steel, but it's nicely done. I've seen that before, but um, it's usually like, uh, have I, am I crazy or have I seen like a Panzer, Panzer regiment engraved in those hilts before? And we may have. Yeah, yeah, yeah possibly. But uh, that's uh, that's kind of interesting. Um, Love this too. Oh yeah. Right, be careful we don't lose that towel, Bob. Yeah. It's got an RZM tag on it. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> RZM tag and RZM. Yeah. All right. Okay. Here's another another box here. It's uh, kind of heavy. Well, this is a different man. But still coming from Australia. Yeah. Well, I guess we're going to see a lot of Australian things, Ob. Apparently so. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah. We'll just take them and do the best we can for these guys. And I almost feel bad about it. Almost. No, nah, I do feel bad. I do too. It. I do. It's, it's terrible. Uh, plus, we've lost the market to sell things. Yeah, well, I can't Granted, we're going to be able to get things. We to can't sell keep banging future, on about it, though. We got to just let it go, and it is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah. And hopefully, it'll get better. But uh, I don't know. I, let's see what this is. Some kind of stuff that I don't never know what to do with. M. Baumgarten on the cover there. I don't know what it is, but uh, that looks like Italian to me, or Spanish, or something. Yeah. Um, I agree. Yeah. Uh, we'll have to look and well, boy, there's a lot of whew, man. There's a lot of entries in here, a lot of stamps, and probably quite interesting. Uh, if you study it. Oh, well, that's, this is German. Absolutely. Yeah. Huh. Any, um... Uh, well, I'm not sure what that yeah. is. We'll look into Could it. Maybe some type of war journal. Uh, this is a... a pass. Papers. Whoa, a lot of entries and stamps and... Wow, look at all this. Yeah. Yeah, this guy got around. And I know there's collectors out there that like these kind of things. Um, Spart Offenbach. I don't know what that is either, but 
There you go. See if it's got, yeah, a lot of entries in there too. It looks like a, uh, well, for you guys that are, the collect ledger. these, uh, yeah, like ledger, ledger or something. You guys that collect these kind of things, this looks like a real, yeah, look at all that. Real, wow, look at this. Yeah. Man, there's a lot of, whew, talk about the history of the guy. Look at that. Wow. Holy mackerel, Andy. It's amazing the penmanship back then compared to today. Yeah. You know, those guys, every time they, yeah. anything they wrote is like a piece of art. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this, that's a real nice book. That's got a lot. Oh, it's a student book. Yep. Huh. Reichenberg. Uh, this is a pass of some sort. Looks fine, more. Got his, uh, his picture in it and so forth. I don't think, yeah, no, that's Third Reich, 37, 37. Well, it may have started out yeah. in Weimar and yeah. went into the Third Reich time. And more stuff like that. This one doesn't look used. No, that looks uh, an issue. Oh, no, there's, there's, yeah, there's entries in here, too. Well, for you guys who are into this stuff, uh, these these books like this looks like there's got a lot of. You can spend hours and hours studying these these things. Uh, All in really good shape, really. It's like too. Yeah. Let's see what this is. Uh, got a date of 42 there, is it or 24? I'm looking at it upside 24. down. That may be his birth. <laughs> that was his birth date, maybe. I don't know, but this his father, mother, grandmother. Yeah. This is like a um, yeah. Harold birth type certificate of thing. or yeah. something. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go, guys. There's some some pretty interesting uh, passports and stuff like that for you guys that are into these paper documents. I'll have to check it out further. Uh, here's a some kind of a box here. Let's see what this all is here. Oh, <laughs> I don't think it's a period box, but it's got uh, some metal bars, iron crosses, and. There's what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight medals on that baby there. Yeah. It's a Third Reich one, too. Uh, yeah, there's a west wall on the end, and so that's uh, that's kind of cool. This is a NSDAP, long service or something, Ob? Yeah, it's a, yeah. yeah. The, yeah, I can't tell the ribbons. Yeah, that and thing's, uh, the usual Hindenburg and all. Uh, yeah, nice, nice metal bar. Uh, looks like a nice second class iron cross. Uh, that's a real one, I'm sure. And here's another. Uh, Another metal bar where everything is shaped into a V. Yeah, it's parade mounts. Yeah. Yeah, Luftwaffe entry into uh, Austria. No, that's a memo, I think. You think it's a memo? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a really a good one if it is. Fine for One October 38. No, that's... Uh, that's Czechoslovakia. All right, and uh, a, uh, a close combat, a, a gold wound uh, off of a uh, pith helmet, a crim shield, a um, gold uh, cloth German cross, a whole assortment of things and some stick pins up here and uh, and in case if you don't like it, you can tell yourself there's a bullet there with it. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like somebody already did. It's spent. <laughs> <laughs> it's spent, yeah. What'd I buy this for? <laughs> okay, guys, we're still in this same box here. And uh, uh, let's see what we got here. Uh-oh. Well, I know that's a, Ooh, a it looks certificate. Like a Don, yeah. Don Boyle um, 
certificate, doesn't it, Ob? Yep, very distinctive. So mm -hmm. that's going to be a ring. Yeah. Let's I haven't see. seen a decent ring in 10 years. Remember the last one we had? It was so worn and gone. Well, let's see. Um, that's in a box, but I don't know. I've never seen a box like that. Let me that, see that uh, box, though. You ever seen a box like that? No, but it's nicely made. Yeah. Let's see what the... Uh, I hear it clinging uh, in there. Oh, so here we go. Uh, uh, SS Totenkopf Honor Ring engraved. Uh, Son and Lieben Anglert, 11843 H. Himmler. The engraving on the inside was re-engraved uh, after the war. Wow. The name and engraving was removed by the original wear of the ring at the end of the war. I have seen this before on other rings. So, well, let's see what they're all, all talking about. Yeah, well, the ring, the ring itself looks okay. I'll, Let me take a look at it. Uh, but the inside is uh, Let me just is look bigger. at the outside for now. There she is. So what uh, what Boyle is saying is that the um, the owner of the ring had it engraved, re-engraved after the war. Because it was worn thin, I guess. So it's still an original ring. Well, this is very difficult to get on camera. Yeah, you can see the um, the engraving is bigger than the uh, than the normal engraving. The letters are bigger. Try to show it to me if you can. They're, they're, they're impossible. They're even tough to photograph. But Do you, Are you seeing it there? Yeah, they're spinning it a little bit. Towards me a little bit. No, the, the other way. They keep coming with the top towards me. Top towards you. Yeah. And just roll it, and if we get it, we get it. You seeing it? Just roll it, yeah. I recognize the uh, letters as being bigger than the engraving normally is, though. Yeah, I, I don't know what to think about that. You stopped photographing it? Yeah, I mean, I just don't know what to think about a re-inscription. Re well, Boyle apparently liked it and says it's original, so... Uh, I don't know whether it would be worth what one would be worth without that, but... Uh, uh, we'll have to look into it, but uh, still fun to see a, an honor ring. It's been a long time since we've had one come in here. I like the case that they made up for it, too. It's very yeah, it's cool. Yeah, pretty cool. Now well, there's more stuff in here, guys. Uh, oh, we got a series of mother's crosses, hmm. including a miniature and uh, some extra um, ribbon. Got the whole set there. Yeah, the whole set. We won't wait. waste a lot of time on wait, that. Wait, 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 wait. Turn it back. I want to see what the uh, the box is made. It's just an English box, okay. I don't think the box is... Yeah, well, we made them yeah. use some kind of thing. All right. I think these are just boxes that he... Uh, but I don't know. That looks like an original case. Yeah. But just no, more... It's all English. Uh, tinnies. Yep. Tinnies and stuff. We won't spend a lot of time on that. Now let's see. A smaller box here. Uh, it looks like a, a Widow's Hindenburg. Is yeah. that what that is? That might be an original case. Troya and Troil. And it's signed Hindenburg. Yeah, that's cool. I've never seen that before. Yeah. yeah. Case Widow's Cross, yeah, for Hindenburg. Yeah, that's pretty cool. We've Ooh. never had one of them, I don't think, in a case. First one I've seen. I certainly didn't film one for very long either. <laughs> yeah. 
And this uh, original photo of a youth asking A.H. autograph in Arbor. Hitler has signed the back of a cigarette box. There's a kid asking for a signature in the picture. And uh, here's an A.H. signature on the back of a cigarette box. <laughs> Allegedly. Just hold me a second, Pop, please. Okay. Yeah, so some... Uh, That's an original signature, though, I'll tell you that much. Probably is. Hope it is. Okay. Okay. Well, there's a, quite an assortment of uh, odds and ends there, guys. That's on a ring and wow. Uh, <laughs> getting quite a pile here, Rob. Yeah. I think we're just about done. But is it a pile of gold or a pile of something else? <laughs> yeah, I got one more here. You guys still with us? I know the video's running long, I'm sorry. But we're doing the best we can. We've seen a lot of things that we don't normally see, though, right? Absolutely, Bob? yeah. yeah. So that's, uh, that's good, you know? No, that is good, yeah. You guys don't want to see the same thing over and over again every week, I'm sure. Uh, and we've got more stuff. Oh my. <laughs> Man. That's a, uh, it's a P38. Um, these kind of things generally are thought to have been added by um, American vets. Uh, I don't think you would be allowed to walk around with something like that uh, uh, if you owned the piece. But that's quite an interesting uh, holster there, though. The gun's not there, right? <laughs> no, there's no gun in there. And uh, here's a uh, a canteen. Oh, what's that? Okay, what else you got? Just a canteen here. There's another another holster for a, a small gun. Uh, what was that? A police holster with helmet shield. Yeah. That could be original to the piece. I don't know. There, it's hard to say whether they were added or whatever. Uh, here's another. Uh, Another holster, nicely marked P08, so that's a Luger holster in a brown color. Huh. Yeah. Forty-one. This looks like some kind of a made-up yeah. holster, but boy, that eagle's been there a hell of a long time. Again, we're seeing things that we don't normally see of, so I hope you guys are, some of you might be interested in these kind of things. I 
hope so. Up. Goggles, maybe. Yeah. Set of goggles, night <coughs> goggles or something. Snow goggles. Snow goggles. Yeah, with those fine cuts in the in the uh, eyes. Yeah, that's definitely snow. So you look out of those little cracks. Yeah, it's just so bright. I've never seen that before. No, I've never seen that before. How's it? Is it marked anywhere though? Italian snow goggles. Italian You're right, Ob. There are snow goggles. Well, I never saw that before. That's that's pretty cool. You guys ever see that before? Maybe some of you have. Uh, boy, I tell you, you never know what's gonna come in here, Rob. Really, some really uh, things that are different than usual. in here. That looks like some kind of a, a wood carving or something. Ah, oh, there we go. Everybody has to have one of them. <laughs> That's unusual though to see it carved in wood like that. Any dates or anything on it? I don't see anything on it at all, but it's I'm sure it's period though. Actually it's very well done. I mean that's not yeah. easy to do something like that. It's uh yeah, it's probably one of those Hitler youth uh projects or something like that. I don't Maybe, know. Maybe, yeah. That's it. What's, not the, a, not what's the back look like? Just plain. Just plain though? Yeah. Looks like a stool top. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but as I say, that's yeah. not easy to do. Uh, yeah, that's uh, quite quite artistic. Whoever did that. Okay. Ow! Stabbing myself with a Bob Burns cutter here. <laughs> and uh, I think that's. I think that's it. There's another. A bag of something here. I don't know what this is. Wow, a bunch of little envelopes. Should I open them? I think you should. Yeah, I, I think I'll let them go. What do you mean you're gonna let them go? Uh, I don't know. Open one. All right, I'll open one. They're all sealed up and. Could be a cash bonus. Yeah. Cash bonus. <laughs> yep. well, I guess there's something inside of this corridor. Now I'm bleeding. I stabbed myself with a cutter. Oh boy. Just pour some Imperial on it. There we go. Whitman blood. Dedicated to the hobby. I don't think he would put this piece of cardboard in the envelope with nothing in it, do you, Ob? There must be something in here. Oh, I think I see something. There you go. Party see badges. That? Some nice party badges, huh? Yeah. Yeah. They're upside down, but that's fine. There you go. Now they're right side up. I'm still bleeding here. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I open another one? Sure. Try not to bleed all over everything, okay? Yeah, that's a kind of an interesting thing. Uh, is it a watch fob? I think it is, yeah. It's an imperial. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a watch fob. Yeah, yeah sure. it's quite pretty. Yeah, it's nice. I nice. Like that. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, Tough to get on film, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I whipped it away too fast yeah, again. Yeah, like it, yeah. Let's see what this is. Uh, well, we've seen them before. Mm -hmm. NSKK. It's got a little of the RZM tag on it. That's cool. 
Let's see what else is in these little, little envelopes here, guys. I know you're just dying to see. Or you're just dying, one of the two. Ah, uh, here we go, a, a dog tag. Um, I'm not sure where that helms from there. Oh, here's another one. Uh, this is an artillery airsots battalion. Let's see what this is. Uh, Some uh, some army um, M43 insignia is that probably trapezoid or it's not a trap? Yeah, certainly original stuff, unissued. So there you go. Um, I guess that's uh, that's about it. All this stuff back. Uh, well, again, guys, uh, you know, a lot of stuff you don't don't see too often. Maybe you're saying, "Thank goodness," but uh, <laughs> uh, it's you know we got to open up what's here. Even got myself cut over that box of treasures. Gluten air. Yeah. Here, put these in there too, Pop. Hey. Oh yeah, they got one. Oh, that's right. Yeah, all those holsters. Well, for you guys that like holsters, there's some interesting ones. That's cool. I like that. Yeah, that's cool. Only the freshie. All right, I got one more sword box. You want to open that, or you want to call it quits? No way. We're gonna open that sucker, and uh, but we're gonna have another drink first. Okay. So you're going to have another drink whether we open the box or not, is that it? I'll Basically, yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll freshen up mine too. Well, I think the blood stopped now, that's good. Get this napkin there. The Whitman sacrifice. <laughs> All right. The Move this somewhere else. And we'll see what's in this big box here. Watch that pole behind you. It's about ready to. What is? That pole top is ready to take a slide there. Straighten that up. There you go. We don't want that to happen. Let's see if we can get this open without too much turmoil. What happened to my drink? Oh, <laughs> oh! <laughs> you gotta slow down. Slow yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not gonna be late for work, right? <laughs> well, I'm worried. The, I'm worried the video is gonna run too long, and everybody. Nobody uh, complains about that. Don't worry uh, about it. They're, they're probably sitting there all sound asleep. I don't want that to happen. <laughs> I didn't stir it yet. Let me stir it. Oh. All right. Okay. Okay, I'll let's have a good box here. Finalize yeah. it. I think I'm going to light another Denobili too, as long as we're wasting all this time. Yeah. Well, I hope this is something interesting. We shall see. And I'm sure this is interesting. Mm. All right. Thanks for persevering, guys. I'm hoping this will open up from the end without a problem. I'll see. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's 
Right. Got lucky on that one, Pop. Let's see here. Got some bubble wrap here. We're getting there guys, we're getting there. Hang in there. Well, we're almost there guys. easy as it looks. Gotta be careful here too, I don't want to cut anything. Besides your hand. Besides my hand there, which I've already <laughs> cut. You can cut your hand all you want, just don't cut the scabber. Yeah, do the knot. Alright guys, we're getting there. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, there you go, guys. Looks like an SS officer uh, sword. Looks like to an me. SS officer sword with uh, Tom Johnson labels on it. Wow. Boy, this must have been a long time ago. SS officer sword. WKC, you don't see that much. Condition excellent, nineteen hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> wow, that's got to be like a nineteen sixty-two. Long, long, <laughs> long, long time ago. Got a knot on it, uh, and a nice, uh, well, Real hangers, long hanger, yeah. hangers mark too. Yeah, let me see that. Got the whole rig there. Yeah, the whole rig. It's upside yeah. down, Pop. Huh? It's upside down. Oh, is it upside down? Yeah. Uh, sorry. It's okay. Tilt it towards you a little bit. No, the other way. Yeah. 60-41, yep. Got her, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the, uh, the knot is original. Yeah. It's kind of an odd looking... Um, Can I see the knot again real fast? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. No, the knot's definitely original. Kind of an odd looking um, uh, button though, uh, and the way it's set in there. Uh, but then again, uh, when have you ever seen a WKC uh, mm -hmm. SS officer sword? Yes, WKC marked. Um, I don't believe the white washer, that looks like it was put on to me. Uh, Can you tilt it a little towards me and spin it? Yeah. And, uh... It looks like the C's missing in WKC. Well, that's frequently yeah. with them. And then typically they, uh, they marked all their police and, right. uh, swords with that, uh, with the SS runes. Um... Uh, I've never seen a, um, a WKC SS officer sword, um, and it definitely the um, uh, the button and so forth looks different than we normally see. Can you hold it, hold up for me, so I can see it? See how the button is odd, the way it's, uh, trying to. and the way the wire goes around it, and 
but it could be just be the way that uh, that they did it because I don't see any signs of alteration here at all um, also the button has a painted background where normally it's um, it's a black um, burnish kind of thing Uh, the uh, the blade is fine. Any marks on the throat? No, uh, and there wouldn't be because um, uh, WKC stamped the SS in the in the blade itself, uh, and on their police swords and so forth, uh, you won't see any SS proofs on the so that all that all fits and. Let's just see what we got here in this uh, this folio. Uh, this item is a beautiful nickel silver model in excellent condition. The blade is marked on the obverse with WKC and the Knight's Head trademark and on the reverse with the SS runes. There is some gray spotting to the obverse and reverse blade. The scabbard is in superb condition with only a few minor nicks to the black paint. If there's any question on the authenticity of this piece, I can be reached at uh, Lieutenant Colonel Thomas M. Johnson in uh, a sealed... Uh, uh, so Is that letter dated? It's dated um, 24 October 1990. Uh, so let's see, 10, that's 20, almost 25 years ago. Almost 34 years yeah. ago, you mean. It's 34 years ago. Yeah, so um, so there you are, guys. Um, um, as I say, I've, uh, I've never seen a WKC SS officer sword. Uh, but then again, um, I see no signs of alteration anywhere in the, in the hilt. Uh, and the button is different than we normally see, but that could be what WKC used, so... Is the uh, hanger marked, though? The secondary hanger? This hanger? No, that one. The, the one hanging off of that. Yeah. Oh, the belt loop, you Belt mean? loop, yeah. No, it's no. Uh, it's part and parcel of the hanger. Okay. The hanger is a real gem. Yeah, it's, it's and, killer. Uh, so, uh, and I think um, WKC normally used a black washer. And I think somebody along the way put that white washer on there because they thought, oh, all SS swords are, have to have white washers. Well, they did. If they were unmarked or if they were Krebs, they had the white washer. But you say you never saw a WKC officer dagger before. Uh, yeah, so. but I, the, the, white, the white washer uh, does not look old enough to me, <laughs> to put it that way. It's a brand new washer. See it's that? a white wash washer. <laughs> <laughs> so the washer may have been a replacement, but so what? Um, yeah. So there you go, guys. I mean, that's a, um, a very, very unusual um, SS officer sword. Uh, but it, um, I mean, you have the the Johnson certification, and it does look, it does look okay to me. But but since I've never had a WKC, I can't say for sure, uh, but I believe it looks uh, looks okay, other than the washer. Uh, the knot is certainly original, and the hanger is certainly original, and, um, you know, you would think um, if it's altered, it would have been, they would have taken a, um, a police sword and inserted a, um, a rune, but there, when you, when you see that, there are signs of alteration in the wood, and there's no no signs of that at all. Let me get a so, close up. Let me have a so sword. So that uh, that uh, sword was definitely made that way. It's not an alteration. So I I would say it's a good piece, and old TJ's right. It's odd how the wire dips down into it. But see how professionally that's yeah. done. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's cool looking. I like that. Yeah, so that's a that's a good sword. So, guys, I think that's uh, I think that's it for today. Um, I'm stepping on my uh, 
But the nobly here, it's all all crushed and uh, uh, and my hand stopped bleeding. So we saw uh, we saw some kind of interesting things, uh, stuff we don't normally see. And uh, I know the video has gone long, but uh, I apologize for that. But uh, thanks again for uh, for watching, and uh, I hope some of these things were interesting to you. It was interesting to me. I love seeing things that we've never dealt with before, and uh, uh, it's such a vast, vast hobby, guys. Uh, so um, we shall see you next week, and uh, don't forget to send your comments in, and if I can do anything for you, send me an email. Thanks a lot.